Hey everyone, uh, this is Wade Thomas, Black Tie Barn Candle Company. Today's going to be a little bit of a different type of video. This is just going to be uh, kind of a conversational, very casual, unstructured type of video today. Um, I've been getting asked for several weeks, months now to kind of do a video on how I got started. Um, you know, what, what got me started into making candles as a hobby and then into a business and kind of talk about my journey to this point. And so, um, like I said, this is just going to be very casual, unstructured type of uh, video today. Hope to keep it kind of relaxed and conversational. Um, I've got some stuff to do outside today anyways around the property. So I'll be out doing some, you know, like I said, some some work around the property, some mowing. I need to feed the koi pond or feed the koi fish. I, I've got quite a bit to do and I thought it's a awesome, glorious day outside today. So why not just, uh, why not just tackle two things at the same time? So while I'm outside today, I'm just going to take a little bit of a break in hopes to kind of keep this from being too stagnant. Uh, just kind of walk around a little bit and talk about my journey and how I got started. And hopefully you all enjoy this. So thanks for tuning in. Okay. So like I said, I'm going to kind of talk and walk here at the same time. Um, and then uh, I'll, I'll stop periodically and take a couple breaks. But I did want to talk about how I got started making candles um, in the very beginning. So it's actually kind of a funny story. Um, spin around here. I'm trying to avoid staring into the direct sunlight here. Um, so it's actually a really, really funny story. My girlfriend at the time, who ultimately became my wife, um, when I first met her, I noticed that she burned candles all the time, specifically mostly Yankee candles. And not only did she burn them all the time, that also meant she was buying them all the time. And we all know that it gets rather expensive. And while it wasn't really my place in the relationship at the, at the time to comment on spending habits, uh, that'll get you in trouble. But it was kind of an opportunity for me to say as a joke, man, you sure like burning these candles and you spent a lot of money on them. I could probably make you something just as good for a lot less and save us some money. Well, that was obviously a joke. I had no idea what candle making was all about. Never made a candle in my life. I wasn't even a candle fanatic at the time myself. I mean, I enjoyed them, but nothing to go out of my way or anything. Well, a joke like that's the wrong thing to say to your wife. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Um, you know, in, in not so many, so many words, she basically said, you know, prove it. And so, you know, what started off as a joke is kind of what led me to where I am now. So what was the progression from that joke to actually running a full fledged business? So before we get into that, I was just about to feed our glorious koi fish in our koi pond here. So let me take a quick break and grab the food and you can see how these guys respond to getting fed. All right, so I've got the, the uh, food to feed the koi. Um, they're hungry little suckers all the time. So, But I like to come out and kind of hang out with them a little bit every day anyways. Boys really like them too. Let's see if I can get you a decent shot of these guys here. Uh, there they are. They see me coming and so they swarm wherever I go. It's kind of funny. Actually, if I walk up here, they'll probably follow me. Let's see. If they notice, if they notice me up here, if they see me, they'll come over here. Let's see. There they come. All right. So, anyways, let's get these guys fed. Know how hungry they are. So we got three big ones in there. There's a bunch of little young ones. Uh, 18 of them, I believe. Uh, the biggest one right in the middle, uh, that is Frederick. Uh, he, he's my favorite. Um, and then there's Steve, which is kind of the oldest child. You can't see him. Oh, there he is. Um, and then the other big one over there, um, kind of off doing her own thing. Uh, that's Karen. Yeah. So, anyways, that's done feeding the fish for now. Just had to get that out of the way. That's actually what I came back here to initially do before I decided... Uh, let's, uh, let's do a video. So let me just sit down here, get this set up and we'll do a more, uh, and we'll just do this sitting down, make it a little bit more comfortable. And I'll tell you all about my candle making journey. All right. So how exactly did a joke with my girlfriend at the time turn into a, uh, full fledged candle making business? Well, as I mentioned, you don't make a joke like that, that you can do something, um, to your wife, unless you can at least attempt to follow through. So I, that's exactly what I did. I, uh, I thought, all right, 
I'll show her. I show her I can do this. So I, uh, I ran to the local hobby store and I bought all the wax uh, and, and I bought whatever wax they had on the shelf, whatever oils they had, which is not many, um, whatever random wicks they had, a couple random jars um, and some dye. And uh, went home, uh, made my first couple candles. And before I go any further, I think all of you probably already know that that was going to end up in a complete disaster. We, we all know that those materials from these local hobby stores just aren't going to cut it. Um, however, it was even worse than I thought. Now, granted, I didn't know what I was doing at the time. I was just kind of following the, the, the instructions on the packaging of all these materials and how to do this. But let's just say they turned out as a complete train wreck. Um, I couldn't smell anything out of the candle. Um, they, didn't, they didn't really look all that good. Um, the burning was horrible, so I don't know what kind of wicks they sell, these generic wicks, but they didn't cut it either. Um, so all around, just a completely miserable performing candle. So I thought, well, maybe I just screwed up and I wasn't going to tell the wife that, or sorry, wasn't going to tell the girlfriend that, um, you know, at that point you're still trying to impress each other. Right. So, <laughs> um, anyways, uh, so I made, I did another second attempt and, uh, let's just say it didn't go a whole lot better, maybe a touch better, but ultimately it was still a terrible candle. So, um, as, as you all know, um, probably by now that, I quickly learned that candle making was not some easy peasy process. Um, this was not something you can just tackle very quickly and make a great burning candle. There's a lot more complexity that goes into it. It's just not an easy thing to do, contrary to popular belief. It's marketed as something that anyone can do, and technically speaking, anyone can do it, but it's much more difficult, time consuming, requires a lot more money, research, effort, um, and patience than many would believe. Um, and so I quickly figured that out. However, rather than getting discouraged and just kind of giving up throwing in the towel, um, I thought, all right, challenge accepted. And that's kind of how I am. So I like trying new things. And, and one of the things that intrigues me um, about new things is when they become challenging and uh, requires some, some effort. I saw this as an opportunity and thought, all right, this is there's more to this candle making thing than I thought there was. And now I'm intrigued because I was interested but I also was fully aware I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I stopped making candles immediately and spent literally probably the next six to 12 months doing nothing but research and some experimental testing here and there too. Uh, but it was mostly about research, learning, education. That's all it was. Kind of like what I'm trying to offer here through this channel um, to a lot of you starting out. I'm just trying to kind of short, not really shortcut, but kind of speed up that process for everyone. I had spent a so much time researching all the vendors and suppliers out there learning everything about wicks and waxes that I could at the time. And I'm still learning today. We we're always learning in this industry because the industry is always changing. Um, different waxes become popular. Oils are constantly changing. Wicking is always becoming evolutionary and, and changing its technology as well. And so I had spent a lot of time researching and learning everything I could. And then I started doing a few sampling and trying to make things here and there, see how it went. For the most part, early on, it wasn't all that great. Although you could see that things were getting noticeably better and I was making some progress. Started documenting my results, um, finding manufacturers and suppliers that I could rely on, especially early on in my process. I started getting more comfortable and getting comfortable and confident and detail oriented is the key to success in this business. I am not one to rush things and I like to be diligent and very deliberate about things. So. Even early on, before I had a business and was really selling these at all, I was still acting like a business. So I was using software or spreadsheets, very detailed notes and processes to track everything so that I was helping myself learn as I go, but also setting me, myself up for success in the future. Long story short, let's cut to the chase. It was about a year later that I, I was really making some candles that I was happy with and I was feeling really comfortable with. Ones that now I could actually, you know, take to some, some friends and some family and say, hey, try these out. Let me know what you think. And it went well. Um, I mean, I ended up getting married to my girlfriend, so obviously I didn't screw them up too bad, right? <laughs> so, um, but anyways, yeah, things kind of started taking off from there. Um, once friends and family started liking them, word of mouth started kind of helping out. And it didn't take long before the candles started to kind of blow up a little bit. Well, oh, that was a terrible choice of words there. <laughs> it didn't take long for my candles to start getting some popularity. Um, 
And then because of that, it was time to really start working on branding and finding a niche. So you're probably wondering at this point how I came up with the name Black Tie Barn. Well, it was among many options that I had at the time. And no matter what other options I was mentioning to other people, um, getting their feedback on, the one that always got the most positive feedback and response was Black Tie Barn. And there were several reasons for that. I think people liked the way it kind of rolled off the tongue. It also kind of made sense for the industry. It really fit me pretty well. Um, I've always kind of worked in the corporate world uh, business. So I know things about finance and accounting and business management things and technology and things like that. But I also had this very handcrafty type of nature as well. And so combining both this kind of rustic and contemporary um, elegant kind of brand together is how you get black tie barn. So it's kind of that, that merge of rustic and elegance. And so um, that's kind of where the name spawned from. And it just stuck really well. And every time I tried to change a few things or consider other options, everyone's like, no, stop. What are you doing? Leave it. It's good. And so it's stuck. And it's been that way now for 10 years or whatever. So um, now I'm very happy with it and I like it. I, I wouldn't change it for anything. It fits, it fits my brand and me very well. So that is where the name Black Tie Barn came from. Now, a few tips on how to get started and speed up this journey and this process. Tip number one is if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Give this video a like as well. And don't forget to hit the bell notification to alert you when I post new videos. That will help make sure you don't miss any of the new ones that I post. And there are many, 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 many to come. Um, I actually got started on this process of posting videos on YouTube and helping others pretty late. Um, I've been helping others for years, but I wasn't doing it on the YouTube channel platform. Um, and I don't know why it took me so long to realize that that's just a more efficient way to help others. Uh, but here I am. So I just started a couple months ago, but I'm happy I did. And it seems like everyone is really enjoying the channel so far. So yes, I encourage you to subscribe. That's tip number one. Um, there's going to be a lot of videos and help on this website, as well as another website I'm building um, that's kind of more of a blog or uh, informational type of training channel that's going to kind of link with this YouTube channel. Um, but more information to come on that later. Tip number two is to test, test, test until you almost hate testing. Um, you don't want to burn yourself out, but testing is the key to success. If you rush this product too much, you're risking uh, safety issues and performance issues. And it's going to be really hard to recover from that early on if you um, if you dive in head first and, and, and hit your head. So my advice is to take a methodical approach and um, and test and be smart and don't try to rush things too much. The industry is not going anywhere. So don't feel like you have to hurry and compete because there's so many others out there that are going to steal your business. The industry is so massive already and there's so so much demand that you're going to settle in. You're going to find your niche. So don't feel like you got to rush um, just to try to catch the business before it's gone. It's just not going to happen. Um, tip number three is early on, start off with reputable suppliers that you get comfortable with. There are tons of suppliers out there. Some are going to be local and driving distance to you if you're lucky, but most are going to be around the country that you'll have to do. Um, you'll have to have shipment um, for your deliveries, and, and that's totally fine. Um, you'll calculate that into your cost of doing business, right? But the point is, is to find suppliers that you are happy with and get comfortable with, and don't try to use too many early on. It's going to increase your cost if you spread out your business across multiple suppliers. It also complicates everything. So. My advice is to pick one or two suppliers early on and try to stick with them um, if you can. Not every supplier sells everything you need. So I understand that there's going to be times you have to kind of step out or, or go somewhere locally to get maybe jars or whatever. But as far as fragrance wax and oils and wicks and that kind of stuff, it's, it's good to try to find a supplier to stick with early on. I think that will really help. You know, the next tip would be don't focus too much on details that don't matter. Now, I started off telling you that I'm a very detail-oriented person and that you need to be detailed in your processes. That part is true. What I mean is don't focus on the details that don't matter as much. So your focus right now should be learning, learning how to make a proper burning candle, getting really good at making a candle, um, focusing on your kind of niche you want to settle into, um, testing, that kind of thing. Um, not so much about, you know, well, I need to tweak, keep tweaking my label early on. I need to get that exactly right. I need to figure out how to do my website exactly right from the very beginning. Um, you know, things like that. You 
that's all going to change and evolve as you grow anyways. And the longer you're in business, that will continue to evolve. And so don't worry so much about that. You can kind of fill that in later. Your goal right now should be learning how to make a good burning candle or wax melt for that matter. Um, and so I guess that advice would be just to keep it simple early on. Don't make things too complicated and don't focus on things that don't matter. Focus your energy where it counts, um, especially early on. There's plenty of time to go down a bunch of other rabbit holes um, as time goes on. Uh, this next tip is, I think, going to get some people to disagree with, um, which, and I that's fair. I totally understand that. We, we all have our different perspectives when it comes to this. But I think this is very important early on. And in my opinion, I see a lot of bad advice to the contrary on this topic, which is about pricing. Now, I can talk about pricing candles until I'm blue in the face. And I will have other videos on this topic that go into more specific details. But my general advice when it comes to pricing your candles is to price them for what you can sell them for. All right, when you're starting off in candle making, your goal is to start building your brand, getting candles out the door, letting people know you exist, getting retention, customers that like your product and want to keep coming back for more. I'm not suggesting that you undercut yourself or undersell so that you're not making a profit or that it's so low that you can't possibly continue at that point um, or your business is going to go under. I don't mean that. I just mean there's a lot of advice out there about taking your cost to make the product times it by three and that should be your retail cost times it times two should be your wholesale cost. All right, from a mathematical perspective, they're not wrong in that formula. That is a general formula for figuring out wholesale and retail cost, but there's a huge caveat to that. That advice is getting taken out of context, okay? That formula is used for large manufacturing companies and large retailers that buy in so much bulk that their costs are very, very small per unit. If you follow that formula early on in your career, your candles are going to be very expensive and you're going to have a hard time moving your candles. So unless you have a specific niche that you know you can sell your candles at a very high price point, or maybe you have a luxury line, which early in your candle career, you probably don't or probably shouldn't, then your costs are going to be too high and you're just going to have a really hard time moving your candles. Many of you may be experiencing that already and be thinking, man, I'm following everyone else's pricing advice, but I'm really struggling to sell any candles. Everyone complains about price or or you just, you're just having a hard time moving them for whatever reason. There's a good chance it has to do with the cost of your candle. And I understand handcrafted and handmade products do hold some more intrinsic value than uh, buying from a big box store. I totally agree with that and I, and I totally understand that. But... To, to use that as leverage to overprice candles can really be a bad thing. And so I'm not saying that our candles are not good quality at all. I think we put more care into our candles, 100%. I think we probably care more about the performance of our candles because we put our own blood, sweat, and tears and patience and energy into our candles. So I'm with all of you 100% that um, the intent of our candles is better and that we have more personal hands-on involvement. And then once you've been doing this for a while, yeah, your candles are going to be just as good a quality, if not better than the ones uh, made from the big companies. But that being said, the fact that they're handmade should not be the reason that you're, you feel compelled to have to sell them for more. The fact that they're handmade and locally made is what's going to help you get business, but that doesn't need to be your leverage for why you price them higher. Your pricing should really be based off of your market and what you think you can sell your candles for, as well as make sure you're covering your cost and making a profit. And, and so you might be wondering, well, I want to sell my candles lower, but if I do, my, my profit and my margin is going to be pretty thin early, in, early on. And the reason for that, and you're totally right, the reason for that is because when you're small, you're not buying a lot of materials in bulk. You're not buying by the pallet loads. You're not buying the high volume that these bigger companies are. And so your cost of goods, your materials are going to cost you more money, which means the cost of making your candle is going to cost you more than it will down the road. So I totally, I totally understand and agree with you that right now, if you price your candles at X and they're costing you Y, that that is, could be a small margin early on. But my advice I've always given to everyone is that you should mark, you should price your candles for the future. So what do I mean by that? 
I want you to create a realistic picture of where you could see your business in a year from now or a couple years from now, five years from now. Do you think, you know, try to estimate how much volume and bulk you'll be buying then? Because early on, yeah, you're buying samples and, and, and one-off items. You're buying one fragrance oil bottle at a time. You're buying maybe one case of wax at a time. And yeah, your costs are going to be high. But down the road, you're going to be buying more bulk. Figure out what the cost of your candles will be once you're buying more bulk. All right. So fast forward yourself a year down the road and you're buying maybe six cases of wax at a time. Maybe you're buying three 16 ounce bottles or a jug of oil at a time. Maybe you're buying your wicks by packs of a hundred or a thousand by then rather than sample packs. Maybe you're buying jars, uh, several cases at once rather than one pack at once. All right. Base all your costs off of that and then see what your profit margin is going to look like. To expect to be making a profit early on in a business is not realistic and it's not how good businesses run. Businesses know that they're going to commit money up front and that they're really not going to start turning a profit for quite a while. And quite a while, it kind of depends on your size and your industry. Quite a while could mean uh, six months, quite a while could be a year, or it could be a couple years. The point is, is just understand that it takes money to make money in business. And early on, yeah, your profit's not going to be high. It's it's part of growing. It's part of developing your business. But if you build your pricing around future costs, what you expect your cost to make a candle will be in a year from now, and then your, your candles are better priced for your market and your customers can afford them, you're going to see your business take off a lot faster, which means you can get to buying bulk much sooner, which means your costs will get lower much quicker and your profit will rise much faster. And so that would be my last tip to starting off in the industry and growing over your first year of, of making candles and maybe potentially starting to sell candles. So I hope, uh, hope you enjoyed this conversational approach um, to this video. Uh, like I said, it was just a really nice day. I had to go out and do some work anyways. And I thought, shoot, let's just, let's just grab the equipment right now. Let's just walk around and do a, do a nice outdoor video. Um, and just kind of tell you a little bit about my story and, and how I got here and what, what got me in the industry. So I hope you enjoyed this. Again, please uh, subscribe below and uh, tune in for other future videos. I will link in the description a few other videos that I think can help some beginner candle makers. Um, but more importantly, I have a lot more to come. So thank you very much and you all have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.